Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you guys all have had a great day. Um, it's been an interesting one for me. I'm a little tired and can't wait. <sighs> Take a shower and hit the bed. But... um Here's an interesting thing. This actually came out yesterday, um, late last night. And this was Amari Cooper. You know, there's perception and then there's reality in life. And one of the perceptions were that there was a, a lot of conflict between Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. And we heard about a fight in the locker room where Amari Cooper literally called Dak Prescott um, the black Kirk Cousins. You know, I wouldn't mind being Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins has made a whole lot of money in the NFL. If you're talking about, you know, capitalism, you could put a C right there in front of his name because he has definitely worked the system. Um, the fact that Kirk Cousins <laughs> tore his Achilles tendon and got $100 million guaranteed by the Atlanta Falcons. Must not have been that bad. Well, Amari Cooper clears the air and says, that never happened. I never called him the Black Kirk Cousins. And, in fact, he actually credited Dak Prescott for rejuvenating his career. Because, see, here's the thing that's kind of interesting. I've pointed this out before. As much as people say, well, Dak Prescott is a garbage-ass quarterback. Well... I tell you, you know, the most yards that Des Bryant had in his career, Dak Prescott was the quarterback. Amari Cooper with Derek Carr, quarterback whom, you know, I remember when Dak Prescott was about to get his neck, or they were working on Dak Prescott's contract. <sighs> Colin Cowherd literally said they should let Dak walk and trade for Derek Carr. So, wait a minute, let me make sure I get this straight. You're going to spend more draft capital to bring in another guy and let a guy who's played pretty well for you go. Okay, that made sense. Especially the guy who had Amari Cooper, and Amari Cooper was basically just not getting it done with um, Derek Carr. Amari Cooper comes back to the Cowboys. All of a sudden, instantly, his career has been turned around. You could look at a guy like Randall Cobb, who I think the pinnacle of his career was 2013. No, no, 2014. And he looked like to be an absolute beast. But then he had this drop. He had injuries and things. And by the time the uh, Green Bay Packers let him go, he was down to about 400-some yards a season. He comes with the Cowboys. He gets over 800 yards receiving. And he ends up signing a $25 million contract to go to the Texans where, as people said, well, now he's got a real quarterback who's throwing to him in um, Deshaun Watson. And his numbers, interestingly enough, went back to where they were with, when he was in Green Bay the last few years with Aaron Rodgers. He ends up leaving the Texans and goes back with Aaron Rodgers. Funny. His numbers were still in the tank. But that's another guy who got paid because of Dak Prescott. Not very often. I'd say Amari Cooper is, you know, really the one of the few. Him and Cole Beasley that have left and done anything of note after being with the Cowboys. Well, you could say Dalton Schultz um, did okay this past year with the Texans. He was in the playoffs. Um, but you can look at this and say, there's a lot of wide receivers who careers turned around after playing with Dak Prescott. And so this is the perception that people have that Dak Prescott's a garbage-ass quarterback. Dak sucks. And I'm sorry. Here's where I look at this and say, this is some bullshit. We have Dakisms. 
that they say. You know, when Dak Prescott is second year, Dak Prescott regressed, Dak Prescott regressed. We heard that battle cry day after day after day, week after week. And, you know, turned it around. We heard about interceptions the year that Dak Prescott had his injury, broken thumb. Oh, he's a turnover machine. We don't hear them talking about it. You know, when Jalen Hurts had 15 interceptions last year, when Josh Allen, you know, is up there with interceptions. You know, when Trevor Lawrence has had more turnovers than anybody else over the last three seasons. They don't talk about turnovers anymore. They don't. But I look at a guy like Justin Herbert, who his second year had a monster year. Oh, my God. 38 TDs. And he looked like he was going to be the greatest thing in the world. He went from 38 TDs to 25. And after that 25, he got the bag. He's got $53 million a year. I believe it is. $53 million a year. You know how many touchdown passes he had last year? 20. Now, people will say, oh, well, he was injured, man. Yeah, but his numbers when he was playing... We're pedestrian. Yet, I don't hear anybody talking about Justin Herbert's regressed. And when it comes to other players, we hear excuses. Man, they ain't got talent. You already heard that, you know, with Josh Allen. Oh, man, the, you know, they did. They got to do some stuff to help Josh Allen, man. They got rid of Stephon Diggs, man. You know, Josh, poor, poor Josh Allen. He don't, he ain't got all the horses. Wait a minute. When we had Michael Gallup on one leg and Noah Brown, who was, you know, Clifford Franklin, I didn't hear anybody say the Cowboys need to get more weapons for Dak. I don't ever hear any sympathy for him. But I guess that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. So, that's what I have for you guys right now. My voice is a little bit hoarse. I need to get some water and things. But we have some good news with uh, um, one of our, our greats, Randy Seitz. Um, he's in a facility learning how to walk again and doing a lot of things and rehabbing. And I believe early June, he'll be able to go back home. He'll, he'll still be, you know, recovering. It's going to be a long road to recovery. Um, he'll only be able to go up and down the steps a couple of times a day or a week or something like that. But he is on the road to recovery. So I feel great about that. And um, another side note, um, my wonderful wife, Tracy, who has gotten to be really, really creative, um, Gina Thorne and her husband actually have like the first like prototype shirts um, of Cowboys Mafia for the fans. And Tracy is working on doing a collage um, where basically she's taking a picture of you and she can dress it and change it up and all that and make you look really, really good. And so she's doing this whole thing for channel members um, on here. And so um, I think she's got the site up and running. So I think tomorrow I'll post for uh, in the community tab um, for members the new site to register. So that way we know your shirt size and things like that for giveaways. Um, and we have your shipping address so we can ship stuff to you. Uh, you know, like uh, we're going to be doing uh, new shot glasses. In fact, I'm going to order them. Uh, probably this week or next week, um, Cowboys Mafia shot glasses. So all the tailgate members, you'll get your Cowboys Mafia uh, shot glass and stuff. And each year, the tailgate members, I've always given them something uh, different. So I think it's going to be actually a shirt for the tailgate members and stuff. And we'll do some other things for uh, the, you guys as well. But we have to have you register so that way we can do all that stuff. And we appreciate all of you channel members and things. So um, look out tomorrow, the next day, um, the link in the community tab for the channel members. And remember, remember, good people, driving up here, went past three car accidents. It only takes a second for your life to change. And so I want people to always remember to make sure you tell the people you love how you feel about them because you might not get the chance again. 
And I love you guys. And God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.